I am laboratory. I'm laboratory technician. That's the profession that I did. I love so much sciences. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough money because my my target was to become a director. Uh, to become what? Uh, not a director, but a doctor. That's really my what I loved so much. Uh, unfortunately, things did not work out as I wanted because the person who was taking care of me it was my uncle. My parents, they were all literate and they didn't have any means of educating. I'm a from a family of eight uh, children and I'm number four. And I managed to be the only person who had seen the BB, the blackboard. So it was my uncle who brought me from the village and he told me to come and take care of his cows before he could take me to school. But because I loved so much to study, I said, I don't care. Other than staying in the village, not studying, I better go there and do something. And I know I'm sure of next year to go to school. So I started very well. I, I took that time and I started educating, going for. Uh, he took me the following year, took me to school. And he, unfortunately, when I reached senior four, he lost his job. Now, when he lost his job and I was depending on, I had no one whom I was depending on. So when he lost his job, I started, started doing odd work, odd jobs. Even at school, I could request um, the head teacher to give me some work to do, so that he could pay me my to could pay contribute towards my. So I did all kinds of work at school, and thank God I managed to go through. And when I sat senior four, I could not for a level which I really needed so much, because that's the only way that I could do medicine that I want going for doctorate. So in that position there, that's when during the vacation of senior four, I don't know how you call it in Kenya. That's when uh, I, the money that I got in that senior five and senior six year in Uganda standard, what I did, I branched. I went, there, I went, and I thank God that immediately, after two, three years, I lost that job in a dramatic way. So when I lost that job, I was taking care of two siblings of mine. Remember, I was the only educated child in a family of eight. So I saw that if I don't do something for my little ones, Along the way, as they grow, they might become a big challenge to me or problem to me. So the best thing that I did, it was to go and pick two of my siblings to come and start educating them. Now, in that process of educating them, things, I, I, I sacrificed everything that I had. I was earning little money, but I had to sacrifice everything. So by the time they reached senior three, I, <laughs> that's when I lost my job. And now I didn't have any saving with me. I didn't have anything. So I was just at zero. And remember, beside that, they had not also sat even senior for where they could go and do some old work using senior for certificates. So what I decided to do in that situation, I sat down, I asked myself, what next should I do? And by that time I was doing that work at in ginger so i said what can i do because i had nothing to start with so the only thing that entered into my mind was to come to the city i came to kampala and life became so hard for me life became so 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 horrible and i decided 
to be at the in the streets of Kampala and you the Nakasero market. Those people who know Kampala very well, it is a, in the heart of the city. That's where I stayed. I started staying there. I I could sleep there. I, in fact, I spent two months on the streets. I could do odd jobs, caring for people, luggage and all that to get something to eat. And I remember I got also, along the way, also got a very wonderful opportunity. And that opportunity was selling lottery tickets, scratch and win. Each ticket I could sell, it was at 1,000 uh, 1, Ugandan shillings. I said you can convert it in your own, uh, in your own country's currency. 1,000 1, Ugandan shillings, and my take home was 100 shillings. Now I needed to sell 30 of those tickets to get a plate of food of 3,000. It was not easy, it was tough. Selling those things was not easy, it is a gambling thing. It was a gambling venture. You scratch what you get is a, now remember most of the, those tickets, they are blank. So somebody can could even scratch like 10 of them and get nothing. And remember somebody can start thinking otherwise. So along the way, as I kept on selling those things, that's when I met a stranger. This was a young boy. And I, I sometimes I wonder how God works. Uh, he met me at that office. He had come to visit the brother. The brother was the, our manager in that office. He had come to visit the brother and looked at me. And even he had even he was even afraid the way we have fears talk to people so he was even afraid but i think he gathered energy he gathered he moved out of his fear and he came and came right to me and said gentlemen i don't know you don't know me but i have an opportunity if we sit down together and we do it together we shall change our lives now i looked at this gentleman young boy who was a student was lame could not talk well he was putting only uh short pants okay I was even doing what? He was even putting on open shoes. I looked at the boy. I said, now God, of all people, this one is the one whom you have sent to me to change my life. So I first of all ignored him. I said, I think this is a, this is a city full of bayai. And even look at the way the guy has been dressed. But as I was contemplating, thinking of how I would really change my life, my inner you know we have two peace persons in us there's this person whom who is talking now and there's the other person inside me you and me there's that some person who is ever very silent and ever uh so so resolved so as i was still contemplating thinking about what this guy had told me something inside me told me man you came to the city to look for the opportunity here this opportunity has come again you're just blowing it away so i handled myself and i thank god that that day i listened to that in me i called this gentleman and i asked him tell me more about what you are talking about he told me that i have nothing to tell you what i've told you is already enough if you are free this evening we have a session around town here you can come and attend so it was really perturbing me so much. It really, I couldn't really believe what I was hearing. So I don't know from nowhere. I said, okay, after all, if it is cheating me or calling me, I have nothing. Okay. In fact, that day when we had moved around the town, the city, all over, and you know, you go to places where the gangsters are, and the people who would, then they could rob some of those tickets. So I had to I'd come back to balance the tickets, and they were not enough. And the rich man, you don't tell him what you are, you, that you, whether they stole them, not, that's none of your, his concern. So I had first of all to kill him before I get my, that I was, that I worked for a day. So I was there thinking such a lot. So I said, instead of me being here, remaining here thinking, let me go and listen what, what this young man is talking about. So evening hours around four, we walked to the trade to the place where the other people are gathered. And when I came, I sat because I was so scared. I didn't know what is taking place. 
Remember, I am in the city. I don't have anyone around who would guide me about the city. So I decided to, to, to do it, to, to sit at the entry, at the entrance there. So that in case what they are talking about does not concern me, I would just slot out minus, minus doing what? Disturbing a people's meeting. So what I decided, I, I sat there, I said, let me listen. In fact, the guy told me that as, you are, as we are going, I want you just to sit down, listen. If there's something that is important to you, take it. If there's not, you're free to go. So that's why I sat, said that I don't disturb anyone, said that in case what they're discussing is none of my business, I sort out, I just move out and I go. So along the way, as they, they were training, there was a young lady who was sharing the, this opportunity. Now this lady, she really amazed me. And she was talking about me. Everything that was she was talking, it was about me. So this young lady said that through this opportunity, I am educating six siblings of mine. Now that was already a very because remember I had only two and I was laboring with them. So I asked this. This one is a, a girl who is still at the university. She's still depending on the parents. So I said now. If this young girl can help six siblings of us, what are we who only had two and I had all that, uh, that challenge? Besides that, she also said that through this opportunity, I, am, I have bought seven acres of land. Now, when the land issue came in, it really so much. My parents, my father was born just one child. And because she, he was born only one child, God blessed him with it, over eight children. And out of eight, seven are boys, only one a girl. So I looked at this and I said, now, in fact, when our grandfather was passing on, when he, he was, before he, he passed on, he sold the whole piece of the land that he had and he left for the, our father just a small portion. Remember, this father of ours has boys, not girls. At least girls, it would be that time would reach, they would go. But now these are boys who are not going to go anywhere. So this gentleman sells all land and leaves the son a small portion. Now here I am being challenged that a young girl who is at the university has seven acres of land. I said, no, 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 no. These people must be doing something which is not right. So I looked at the young girl. I said, no, if she can do it. Then beside that, she said that through this opportunity, I am paying part of my tuition. Now, remember, I, I kept, I started battling earlier, looking for tuition. I started battling earlier, doing all old, old works so that I could raise tuition for myself. Now, here is the girl who's also paying part of her institution. Now, for me, those, in fact, it was not the person who took me to the, the meeting who inspired me. And that's what I usually tell people, that sometimes you only need to bring somebody to the training center and the rest of the work will be done by other people. Not all people whom you invite, they're the ones who are, they, you, you motivate them. They need to get somebody whom, who are, the whom they, they connect with and they talk to them directly. So to me, the gentleman who brought me just brought me up the room and then the other people took over. And let me tell you, that time, and when that lady started talking about money, because I was in bad situation, I didn't have where to sleep, even having what to eat was a tug of war. I, everything was in, in, a, in a, a mess. So when that lady started talking about money, I started moving from the, the door side where I sat. I started extending closer, closer. I wanted it to know where are they getting this money that they are talking about? Because I was in need of that money so much than any other person in that room because I knew what I was going through. But I started moving closer. Now, as time came, and then they said, it is now time for those people 
who are ready to get started. Now, in my mind, I rang, something rang into my mind. I said, ha, the longer waiting time has come. Now, these people now, they want now to start putting us aside. People with money this side, without money this side. So I got scared. I don't really got motivated. I don't really got excitement and come to me. I said, now I think I've got an opportunity. So it is an opportunity for me now to see how I can also be part of this. But now they talked about money, starting, startup, which I didn't have, okay? So, but thank God that that same person said that even if you don't have money, don't worry. You can keep on coming for training as you look for the money. Immediately she mentioned that I was relieved. I said, okay, I am here in the street. After in the morning going to look for some selling those tickets, evening I can come and pull down myself from here. So for me, I started training before joining the business. In fact, I trained for almost two months looking for that money. But I said that now, how am I going to get that money? Every time we could come in the train, they could tell us, you can make get this money. You can, but I didn't have any way I could get that money. Because in the situation that I was in, look at somebody who's in the street. Who, 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 who of you, if such a person comes to you, you could lend him or give him any money? So I through my mind, because I was selling those tickets, and my intention of that was to help me to make friends in the city. So something rang into my mind said, now you have some friends. Before you had no, no, no any friends, but now you have some friends. Why don't you start going through them? So I started. So for me, the money that I got started with, it was multi, multiple borrowing. I did not get some one person to give me the startup because no one could even trust me because the way I was looking, I could put on a ramshackle t-shirt and all that. You know, people, you look at the person in the streets there. So I, the idea came to me, borrow money from different people, such that you don't get one pressure at the same time, at once. So I went through the people whom I used to sell those tickets. I had made them my friends. I could ask them, somebody to give me 10,000, somebody to give me 20,000. And I got that money. I said, I know not all of them that could start calling at the same time, demanding their money. At least one person will call me that day, the other one like that. So I said, let me look for that money. I get that money. Thank God I got that money. And I called the gentleman who, called, who took me there, that I have got my money. So that gentleman, the upline of that gentleman is Jesse. So Jesse, I, he gave me the number of Jesse and called me. I called Jesse. And then I, talk, I told Jesse that I have got my money. I want to get started in the business. Remember, I don't know how I'm going to make the money. And I have got people's money. I don't know how I'm going to raise that money to pay these people. So I called him and I was, by that time, by the time I got the money, a friend of mine had started accommodating me somewhere in a distant place from town. So by that time, I got exact money that I could not even remove even a hundred shillings out of that money. So I walked, from where I, I was, by that time, just had a training at the, at the Mulan. So I walked from uh, the place called Bunga, Gaba Road, for those people who know Kampala properly, then I walked on foot up to where Jesse was. And when I got him, I handed over the money, the whole money. And I said, this is the money I want to start my business. How it is good to work, it was none of my I started this opportunity. And just went to the head office, processed my, my, my kit. And by that time, we had empty kits, no product in it. And he brought for me and told me, this is your ID. This is what you need to do. You have to use the product. You have to, to, to do what? Uh, to share. You have to, to train. Now, I have struggled to get even the money for startup. Where am I going now to get the money for? Using the product. So for me, my biggest, for me, I did the training part of it so much. So I kept coming for training. I kept on coming for training. As I learned, as people uh, come and dem demonstrate LODC, I could also come and de demonstrate. So I would use that to go and share with the people. 
So along the way, I started getting one customer like that. I started getting some small profit along the way like that. And the business started. Now, when my business started, I started moving up. I became a manager. I hope managers are on this, this call. I became a senior manager. I hope the managers are on this call. And in fact, the senior manager was my, my good training point because I had to do a lot. Remember, I was from the street. You see all what is inside the mind. There was a lot of that in the, in the mind. So to start removing the dirt, to start putting in the rightful uh, knowledge inside the brain to expel off the dirt, it was a process. And let me tell you, that's when I really learned a lot. Senior managers who are on the call, senior status, it is the real learning status. You need to take time to go to all what it is for you to understand the business. There, it's a different thing. So I see people well-dressed, very smart, I admire them, I say, God, why me also one day put on a suit? God, not me also one day be smart. God, what, why should I also get some good money? I said, beauty myself. You know, as you are starting, you don't get a very expensive suit. On the streets there, we could get some simple, super suits. And you are trying to transform yourself from the other way of life to another way of life. And I moved myself up to that level. Ladies and gentlemen, to cut my long story short, as I kept on, because for me, when I kept on training, they kept on telling us, but oh, you need to read books. You need to read books, read books. And it is not, not books to get us, but you are empowering this here. Empowering that. Because at the end of the day, accumulate a lot of negative things your mind. Because one day I after supporting the first time, I decided to go to my first place where I grew from because I had my, my brothers there. So I said, because when my uncle the job, most of my cousins brothers struggled there. But because I was do all these things, that's I managed to in my study. So when after this opportunity, I said, I have not got a good opportunity. That I'm going to take to my cousin for my to my cousin brothers, and we shall do as a family, as one because there's not education, there's not require any, any form of academic qualification, there's not whether you come from where, where what kind of religion, religion, religion. So I said this is an opportunity which we are all going to work it out because they kept on telling us you know you need to start with the people closer to you you need to do this you can my dear when i went and i took that information to my brothers they they told me now joseph after you go into the city you think that now you are smart enough to come to come and cheat us you you think that now you you've joined all those kind of people now you think that now you are just coming to 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 tell us all that so i looked at my, my brothers i said you people, this is an opportunity which we shall all do it and become better. Now, after understanding that, and I saw that they are not in for it, I said, okay, if that's the case, let me go and do my own business. So my business, I built it with strangers. Now, I don't say that it is, it is that way. If it works for you, it, there are people whom their, their relatives it has worked for them so much. Please go ahead. But for me, I tried it, it failed. So I said, now I am in the city, I am ready to make new friends. And I started building my, my business through strangers. And today, those strangers are my brothers, my sisters, my mothers, my judges. They are so close to me that I don't spend even a day my as communicating with them. Okay? So I decided that. I said, I am not ready to go through all the negative stuff. I've seen light. 
if they are not really willing to, to listen to me, let me go ahead. I have money. Certain things happen. One of my brothers waited. He went and introduced and he did not even take even bother to inform to, to inform me. So when one day I went there, they told, hey, yeah, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny uh, married and he even he waited. I asked them, even my my husband informing me. And moreover, <laughs> it is really very funny. He did all that using my property. I said, wow, this is how things are. But today there is no any event that takes place minus informing me. Why? Because I have I am someone. Because when you are no one, even your parents will not listen to you. And I thank God. I have built this. I have I moved from senior manager to if by that time executive manager was there, I was through a director. Now I am our ex, uh, what emerald by the going world. And how about this? I decided to work on myself. I decided to work on myself because I knew I am the person who will be against myself. So I had to work on my mind. And for me, what I do, in fact, when you reach even my room, is full of books. These books, I know that no one wants to read. People don't want to read. So I have the biggest investment that I've done is investing into the books. I have a number of books. These are the books that I've so far read this year. Okay? This year only, I have read a number of books about leadership. Okay? About leadership, about your first year in the network marketing. Okay? What do you go through? Okay? Atomic, uh, atomic habits. Okay? These are all the books that I'm reading to work on myself. No excuse. Why should you have any excuse? No excuses in whatever you do. Because they told me that when you become, when you reach uh, GoPro, seven, uh, seven successful, what, uh, uh, seven steps to becoming a network marketing professional. So because they told me that when you become, when you reach eight, 30 years, you no longer complain about your background. You become the background. So that, impacted me so much i said okay i am now over 30 years now i no longer cry about where i come from because now my children should start looking at me as the background and which kind of background do i want to make for them i need to make for them a very wonderful background that i know to go through and i had to work on myself and go through all that to achieve that today the business that i started in a ramsha called way Today, I am someone. When you find me in the streets of Kampala, you might think that we are the people in the in the things. In our country, we call them people in the things. Okay? But I am nowhere. I have worked on myself personally. I am I call myself self-made person because I know from the street, even when I was in that street there, I was poor physically. But in my heart, I was so rich. Today, you find very many rich people who are rich physically, but very poor by the heart, internally. So for me, I thank God that I went through that. And I thank God that I even I lost the job that I lost. And I decided to search for opportunity. And I also thank God that today, I made the rightful opportunity. And I made the rightful choice. I thank God that to me, that gentleman came and approached me. And that these people are all, all over. Because if you don't share with them, somebody else will share with them. If you don't prospect people, people will prospect you. So you can decide what to do. We have a very wonderful opportunity. We have a very wonderful products. We have a very wonderful marketing, uh, market, market plan. And it is us to go and create them. So built my business, and I remember 2019, before COVID, one day they called me, they told me that, you know what? The heart will land on your parents to do something. 
So by that time, I was still struggling trying to eat. Business is coming up. Then I said, no. When I became a director, I started earning a good amount of money. I said, no, the best thing that I can do is to gun a, 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 a semi-permanent for my parents. And I went and I constructed for them. That's a very wonderful, because even if I'm in the city, I am well secure that my parents are somewhere. It is not the best structure, but for me, from where I came from, I am fine. And I know as I keep on progressing, I will get for them. Much better. Through this, I have money to, to, to make money. And that money I'm spending. And because uh, it is, it, it, so long as you are here and you know what you want, you will make money. But besides just making money, the biggest benefit that I've got from this opportunity, they are friends. Ladies and gentlemen, this opportunity has made me meet wonderful people. The people who are part of my life, the people who have done a lot about my life, the people who have introduce me to their people who are much better. I, in fact, there's nothing that I, I really see that it is the best opportunity that I have chosen and has impacted me. I am meeting different kinds of people, all classes of people. And that is really a satisfying thing to me. And let me tell you, that's why they say it is an opportunity in opportunity. Because without it, it will not take you, it will not meet other people. Okay, now, but these people, they are there and we have to share with them, empower them and impact them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity. It is not a job. Most people come with the job mentality in their mind. Think that everything, you see when you, you, are, you are a worker, everything the employer plans for you, when you are supposed to arrive at work, when you are supposed to uh, take your breakfast, when you are supposed to go for lunch, when you are supposed to depart, everything the, work, the, the, the employer has planned for you. In this opportunity, you are the employer and you are the employee. You are the one to decide when to work 